Hello everyone. So today I would be talking about the implementation strategy for application of BIM 4D and 5D in Indian construction projects. So before starting the presentation, I would like to give you a uh, small background about myself. My name is Gaurang Prashant Patil and I work as a BIM coordinator for 4D and 5D operations in Tata Projects Limited. I have an overall experience of three years in Indian construction industry and I have worked on projects like New Parliament Building, Chennai Metro Rail Project and Ames Jammu. I'm a BIM change agent of Indian BIM Association and a committee member of research group of Nikmar Alumina. For more details, you can also search for my LinkedIn ID as given in the presentation. So coming up to the agenda of today's presentation, the first uh, would be the presentation outline that why do we require BIM 4D and 5D in Indian, uh, con Indian construction market to execute the projects. Then some of the industry insights which will states around the uh, projects that have been time and cost overruns. Uh, then the industry demands that what really the industry required for now for uh, and in the coming future to execute the project smoothly. And uh, the strategic approach that how BIM 4D and 5D can serve this purpose to execute the project smoothly. So in the introduction, we can see that India is one of the fastest growing economy in the world and it uh, the construction sector in India contributes around second employment sector after agriculture, which is the significantly a uh, major contribution in national GDP. And as a part and a vision of Indian government, they are trying to put one point four trillion dollars on its infrastructure investment for next five years to make an India a five trillion economy by 2024. So the level of complexity of such projects is very high due to international nature in procurement as well as sophisticated client requirements. So basically you can find that they want to make an economy of five trillion dollars by 2024 and they have already started to execute the plans to have an investment of one point four trillion dollars. And also there are many highways coming up. Twenty six green highways have been executed all across the uh, country and there are many bridge projects coming up like ceiling and a ceiling extension project and more sort of complex projects are coming up which leads to some of the major challenges that we are facing in Indian construction industry like lack of coordination, lots of design changes, high number of changes leading to rework, ineffective procurement strategy resulting at the end resulting into the cost and schedule overruns. So coming to the industry insights in Indian context, according to the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, the, uh, this uh, is the <clears throat> ministry which monitors uh, projects of around 150 crore and above. So they have taken into consideration of 15, 26 projects from last year's infrastructure projects, out of which we can find out nearly 50% of the projects are having a cost overrun or either a time overrun. So you can find it over here out of 1526 319 uh, 393 has been reported as cost overrun and 647 were delayed due to time overrun. So basically we will find the total cost of implementation for 1526 projects was 21.26 lakh crore. But right now to execute same quantum of work, the amount that has been uh, stated by the Ministry of Statistics and Program is 25.9 lakh crores. So basically 4.65 lakh crore is the more cost that has been incurred in executing this project with the same quantum of work due to which 21.88% of the original cost is been taken into consideration again after the execution of this uh, in the middle of the execution of this project. Also in their survey out of 647 projects that were due to time delay 132 were the projects which had a, a delay of 1 to 12 months that is nearly around one uh, one year 118 were around one year to two year span 273 were around two years to five years of span and 124 were delayed above five years span so basically the average time overrun if we can calculate 647 projects were delayed which were having average of around 41.64 months time over so basically if you'll see 4.65 lakh crore is the cost incurred which uh, dedicates that which uh, which helps us to know that there is a requirement to have a proper common uh, coordination process as well as a more technical process. Digital trace records should be there 
so many other things comes into the picture so we require a very smooth flow of construction process with a strategy to execute this projects so this is one of the famous picture that we have in uh, the indian market uh, basically uh, it is of iceberg and the ship so if we uh, if we see ship as an a project or construction project whenever it comes near to the iceberg that is the project schedule that is in when the project is in the construction phase basically before that construction phase in the pre construction level we go for three pillars of the project that is cost time and quality but when the project comes near to the project schedule that is in the construction phase we can see many of the challenges coming up like clashes like interdisciplinary clashes intradisciplinary clashes due to which there is a lot of rework happening on the site more resources are required to execute that project then lack of co collaboration lack of collaboration between the multiple stakeholders which results to delay in decision making there is no proper visualization available for them to hit and run a trial process design changes are going on continuously due to which there is no proper planning can be evolved uh, during the course of execution of a project then symbolic documents are not available due to which there is a rapid change design changes are happening very frequently so this all things uh, this all uh, clashes lack of coordination no visualization design change no availability of symbolic documents which leads to lack of information and then leads to lack of decision making time so basically here we will find what do our industry need uh, need right now so as per the industry insights we have seen that 4.65 lakh crores were extra amount that uh, needs to be incurred to execute this project so we need a digital approach proactive approach for decision making decision design optimization effective planning effective procurement strategy risk management effectively digital uh, record traces from the projects effective coordination and communication so how bim can serve this process or how bim can serve this industry need we will see in the next slides so basically this is a workflow for how to adopt bim 4d and 5d in a construction projects so to apply bim 4d and 5d in construction projects we require two major inputs that is been construction schedule and the design model that is the information 3d model of lod that is level of development 300 or above also we require a construction schedule that is the msp or primavera schedule where the sequence of work breakdown structure is given to execute the whole project from initial level to the final level once this both inputs are available we can break the model 3d model as per the construction schedule and we can link them with the baseline dates so by linking them with the baseline dates we will get this three as an uh, output from the uh, 4d softwares like synchro bexel manager nevis works etc so we can get a construction sequence visualization a project manager or any of the stakeholder of a project is able to visualize the project at the initial level of the uh, pre construction stage of a project where he can also find uh, haywire things which uh, which are not in line or which things are in line so he can have schedule optimization as well as critical path analysis so this comes for 4d when you go when you need to go for 5d you at least require cost classification with the unit rates and that should be conducted in the construction schedule to execute a proper timing of an activity and proper cost that is required to in, uh, execute that particular process so once we are adding this cost parameter into msp or primavera we are able to fetch cost reports and cost estimations from the 5d model so basically 4d stands for the time 5d stands for the cost so this comes for the construction stage when this go for the uh, when this comes into the construction stage we are having the actual progress updates that is coming up monthly or weekly in tata we go for monthly uh, monthly progress update and that update is uh, that particular uh, that particular actual progress schedule is been compared with the baseline schedule that we have got earlier so basically we know that in msp we have four dates that is planned start date plan end date actual start date and actual end date so plan start date is uh, compared with the actual start date and plan end date is uh, uh, compared with the actual start date so we it gives us a clear clear visualization of the process also it gives us the clear idea that what amount of work is lacking behind so once we are done with the plan versus actual construction uh, in the 4d software or 5d software we are able to fetch real time progress monitoring that is plan versus actual progress then we are also able to have plan look at plans and actual uh, also the actual look at plan so 
as per the plan look at plan for the three months six months or one month we are able to exit uh, we are in the position to calculate the number of resources and as per the actual progress we are able to know that what amount of more resources we are required if you are lacking behind the progress then critical path monitoring has been done through this particular part so that we are in able to know when the critical path, for example any critical path is approaching in the one month look at plan we are able to get the particular required material particular required labors particular required machinery to execute that particular critical path activity on time then we have uh, this comes for the 4d and as well if we are going for 5d projects uh, with the 4d we are able to fetch cost reports and cost tracking but as per the cost progress this was the cost uh, achieved and executed or planned or executed so we will this uh, so here are the inputs here is the processing phase and here are the outputs that we get from the 4d and 5d that will serve the industry purpose so basically uh, we will uh, know more about this particular process in detail in the next slide So the step one includes the inputs required for 4D and 5D operations. So to conduct 4D and 5D operation, we actually require a 3D information model that is on the good for construction drawings, at least for LOD 300 and above level. Once this model is available, then we come for the we, we look for the project schedule where all the activities are uh, having a work breakdown structure. All the activities, sub activities are having specific start date and end dates so that we can have the same number of the uh, same uh, work breakdown structure where the model can be bifurcated into and then link into. For example, if I need to give an example, there is a uh, there is a structural slab that need to be costed on the site and it has been uh, divided into three pores. So each pore is having a, start, a different start date and uh, end date or respective start date and end date. So it is very compulsory for a, three, a 4D modeler to bifurcate that particular 3D LOD 300 or three uh, above level model to bifurcate that particular structural slab into three pores so that he can give respective dates to the respective pore level slabs. Also, one more thing that I missed on. So basically, if you are have, uh, adding this particular uh, cost details into the MSP schedule, it becomes very easy for a 4D or 5D modeler of a coordinator to add, add that particular cost required to execute that particular activity at that particular time. So it is very essential whenever you are starting the 5D progress, it is very essential to have the cost data inculcated into the MSP, MSP part or the cost breakups that is BOQ should be inculcated into 4D or 5D softwares. So the step second is adding 4D parameters. As I stated that the MSP schedule is having work, uh, definite work breakdown structures. So we can add that particular work breakdown structure into LOD 300 model in the Revit platform. Here you can find this is the L uh, WBS level that is work breakdown structure level one. So here it is structural works, then superstructural part, pore two, ground floor roof slab and the slab concrete. So the slab concrete activity of pore two has a specific date and specific time. So at the start time and at the end time, it helps us to understand the uh, level more completely. Now the step three comes into the linking model with the schedule and cost. So basically once you are uh, you have completed the break work breakdown structure or bifurcated the model as per the work breakdown structure in, L, uh, in the Revit platform, you can then import that particular model uh, from Revit to a 4D software like Bexel Manager, 4D and 5D software like Bexel Manager or Synchro. So once you have done with that, here you can find uh, this part of the screen. This part of the screen is the schedule that you have imported it, that the baseline schedule. And here you can see that these are the selection sets that you have created uh, by bifurcating the LOD 300 model. So you can find this. Uh, it is the exact replica of the schedule that is the selection sets of the model. So here if you will find that substructure then phase one basement one pore one pack filling and compaction same level of linking you will find over your phase one basement one pore level so here is the part of linking schedule and cost once you link the bifurcated model with the schedule automatically the time and the cost component gets um, automatically the time and cost components get linked so now once you are done with that you are in a position to conduct a baseline simulation video so this is a sample video of a Tata project, uh, one of the uh, project of Tata. So here you can find the date is there. That's the start date. That is the 4th August 2020. The completest cost percentage 
completed cost and the cost uh, completed percentage as per the cost. So I will run this video. So you can find it over here. The, uh, the structure level is coming up as per the baseline dates of the MSP schedule and the cost and the percentage is also coming up with respect to the date that has been assigned to. So here you will find. That this is the complete uh, structural and architecture model of one of the project of Tata projects and they have uh, we are in a position to visualize the sequencing of the construction. We are able to see what amount of percentage should need to be achieved at what particular time of the project phase. So the baseline simulation has been conducted. Now we will go to see once we had just a second. Once we have linked the 4D and uh, 5D plan dates and actual dates to the particular project, this is another example of uh, the plan versus actual uh, project, plan versus actual simulation of a particular project. So here you will find it over here. Yeah, so it's a league mall project of a Tata. So here you will find the location is coming up into a single video. Then the project overview that is the project details are coming up with the project model. Then the simulations. So this is the uh, simulation from uh, we can also have a front view top view for the simulation so that a project manager gets a good view of a project and good visualization. So here uh, this is the pore line. So this is the poor one part coming up with the levels coming up over here. These are the activities that have been going on and this are the dates. Uh, uh, Respect to the dates, the per uh, completed percentage and completed cost or achieved cost. Just forward this video. So now we can compare both the simulation that is planned progress was this actual progress. So I will just move forward for some part. Yeah. So if I stop for 30 January 2022 for the same date, we can find it over here that the planned percentage was around 7.61% and <clears throat> we have achieved till now 4.35%. So at this initial level, that is the PCC level of the project, we are able to compare that we are 3% behind the plan dates and on the 30 Jan 2022 of the project. So this simulation helps the project manager in the look at plans that how he can uh, reduce this delay, how he can come back to the project uh, project on track. So this kind of visualization helps the project manager to take a decision at that particular time at the initial level of the progress. So this is the planned progress. You can find it over here that that planned progress for, uh, of a particular phase is going on, whereas at the uh, actual level, the uh, progress is very slow compared to the planned level. So here we can find it over here. Here we can also have the comments like there was no availability of material or there was no availability of labors for that particular part or there was uh, some site constraints or the climatic constraints. So here we can also have a detailed uh, perspective of how a project can be monitored at the particular level of uh, any date of a particular level of a project. So here then we can go for the look ahead plans. So here we can find that that is the Plan. This particular part is a plan look ahead plan and this is the actual look ahead plan. So you can find it over here that the color coding has been given that the completed activities would be uh, reflecting in the green part. The work in progress activity would be reflecting in the yellow part. Then the first month look at second month look at third month look at and after the acti uh, third month look at the activities that need to be executed. So here you can find this the basements part is been uh, should have been completed till this level, but here we are at still at the basements. So work in progress. Then the first uh, first month look at second month look at. So just by the visualization, we are able to predict that we are at least two floors behind. After three months, also we would be after uh, two floors behind. So that's this simple project. So we are able to take a decision making power that we can re, uh, we can have. Um, Crashing of activities or we can have simultaneous activities going on on the site. 
so going on for the simultaneous activities we require more amount of labor at that particular time more amount of machineries more amount of labor at that time so we are in position with this simulation just with this 5 minute simulation we are in position to predict what amount of planning we require to execute the particular project so that it can come back on the track after 3 months so basically we can also get the photograph level uh, identity so that on the whatsapp groups of the uh, stakeholders or on the platform like uh, acc that is advanced construction cloud that is uh, formerly known as earlier known as bim 360 docs so here we can give the photos to the particular project managers top management and the client so that they can be able to get the particular plan versus actual photographs so the plan progress for this particular project was block work 12th floor as per the baseline schedule ro but as per the actual site conditions it is going around the fourth floor so we are at least eight floor back so here it's the time for us to uh, either change the baseline dates or either go for the crashing of activities or either go for uh, simultaneous work of activities so that we can achieve the particular deadline and we can avoid cost overruns and time overruns we can also fetch 4d uh, 4d and 5d cost reports uh, 4d time and cost reports from power uh, in form of power bi through bexel software as we are using this so here we can get the total cost of the project the material uh, cost of the project labor cost required equipment cost required of the project for structure and architecture model once the mep model is been inculcated this cost uh, this called pa parameters will be exactly replica of the boq of the uh, this particular uh, for the boq for the labor and material cost as well as the equipment machinery cost then we go if you go for the detailed report like category wise uh, break cost breakup here we can find that our uh, architecture walls beams then uh, columns doors foundation this all color coding is given and the dates have been given from july 2023 jan 20, uh, 2023 july 2022 like what amount of work is been planned as per the schedule uh, cost that to execute this particular uh, planned uh, activities we require this particular cost here we can have month wise cost details like plan versus actual month wise like here we are approaching to the plan versus multiple because the baseline and the actual was same at that particular time so the uh, here we can predict that the project is as per the baseline schedule project uh, progresses as per the baseline schedule so we are with the project schedule of baseline dates here is the that is the s curve that is been required for the uh planning team to monitor them monitor the particular project at every interval of time through this cost that what amount of uh, planned cost has been there what amount of actual cost has been there so here you can find that both the both the lines are on the same th thing that's why we can predict that the project is going absolutely well and this is the task breakup planned cost and actual cost breakup for the project so basically with this all the data that we have one thing we can uh, surely say that we have a better collaboration and communication system where each and every stakeholder gets the report or gets the real time progress tracking of the project at that particular time then model based price cost estimation and quantity take off so basically we are able to have that what amount of quantity is there estimated quantity as per the manual count, uh, estimation and as per the model based quantity uh, model based quantity take off so we are having the model based quantity take off that is the cash free quantity uh, cash free quantities and we can have a precise cost that has been inculcated to execute this project then we have clash detection and better coordination as i said that once the uh, lod 300 or 350 is achieved or 400 is achieved we are uh, continuously doing clash detection uh, process so where we can eliminate the clash at the initial level so that uh, it can help us to reduce the rework uh, rework at the site it can help us to reduce the required uh, labor at the site at the time of uh, clash detection um, insertion in the project uh, in the construction phase and it can helps us to have a better coordination between all the teams at the site level at the consultant level and at the pmc level it helps us to reduce cost wastage and mitigate risk so how it can helps us to reduce the cost suppose for example a project is going on a uh, project is going through uh, means project is there without going through bim and one project is there with uh, where bim is implemented uh, 3d 4d and 5d so it helps us to first of all it helps us to mitigate the classes so definitely it will mitigate risk it will defin uh, definitely mitigate wastage and in the 4d and 5d level it helps us to inculcate a better planning into the uh, process so that we can have 
the optimum required of resources, optimum utilization of the resources to have a smooth uh, workflow of execution. Improved scheduling and sequencing, as I showed you the uh, simulations and the planned uh, look at and actual look at, it helps us to understand with the images at that initial level of the time that what amount of uh, resources we require to execute that project to bring back project, bring the project back on track. Project visualization during pre-construction phase definitely helps us to know the sequencing of activities, how the activities will be coming, at what level we would be requiring, uh, what amount of resources we would be leaving with uh, requiring with. For example, when the block work activities uh, reaches to the fifth level or sixth level, we all also start the architecture, other finishing our works at the first floor level. So all the required labors that are there, it helps us to have a proper set of data with the real-time tracking and real-time monitoring so that we can have a better decision-making power. Critical path analysis and look at plans, as I told you, just through visualization also and through the uh, 4D and 5D simulations, we are able to analyze critical path. We are able to track critical path, monitor critical path. Also, we are able to have a look at plans that can help us to bring project back on track. Accurate plans and shop drawings and walk uh, walkthrough in 3d model also helps us in marketing some of the residential projects or it helps us to it helps uh, to give the idea to the client that how this model will look how the project will look after the execution in the initial phase of the project so that's what uh, that was it for the how we can implement vim 4d and 5d so i will just summarize the thing that first we required lod3 uh, the first model that we uh, first step, uh, I will just rec uh, recall the whole strategy that we required. The first thing that we required is construction schedule that is in the form of MSP or Primavera, and then the LOD 300 model. Once this is there, we can bifurcate the schedule as per the requirement. Once the bifurcation is done, we can bring that to the 4D and 5D software. We can link the uh, MSP data or Primavera data to that particular model. Then once the plan data is linked to that as per the baseline schedule we can have construction sequencing visualization schedule optimization critical path analysis and when the 5d data has been linked we can get cost reports and cost estimations so once the project is in the construction phase we will have the actual progress data actual progress update monthly or weekly mostly it is done monthly so once uh, once in a month we will get the uh, updated uh, actual progress schedule so we can compare that in the previous month this was the uh, this was the planned progress that we needed to achieve this is the actual progress that we have achieved so we can have a uh, we can have a distinct uh, determination or differentiation about how much pro flows or how much activities or how much days we are behind the schedule and we can have the real time monitoring progress so we can have a better decision making power we can have a better planning we can have a better coordination through this and we can also track the cost and we can also mitigate the risk that can be uh, that can be uh, that we can have uh, risk we, we can also mitigate the risk by encountering the risk at the initial level of the project and we can mitigate that in at the initial level of the project itself so that when the risk comes at the later stages of the projects it definitely will have a cost and time impact on the project so this was it that how the bim 4d and 5d implementation strategy should be there so thank you all and if any questions you can just uh, message me on linkedin or we can also have the uh, later the discussion on uh, the portal thank you